Goobers, welcome back to another video. We have some somber news. My best buddy, Cowie Flo, got his motorcycle stolen. It's a 2011 Ninja ZX6R. Um, it's something that he doesn't know about um, this video in particular. Every cent that I make off this video, every little um, second you watch is gonna directly support my boy, Cowie Flo. Look at his GoFundMe down below in the description. Please donate uh, and, and get the word out. Um, so now, without further ado, here are the top five things you should do after your motorcycle gets stolen. Number one, after your motorcycle gets stolen, you need to report it to the police. That's pretty self-explanatory, but you need to file a report, be as detailed as possible. Uh, and in 2019, in California, 45% of all motorcycles were recovered after getting stolen. Number two, inform your insurance company. Uh, see if they work with you. It might be as simple as they just write you a check and say, okay, stolen. Here you go, here's money for a new bike. Uh, if you have full coverage, but if you don't, um, you're gonna look at some uh, uh, other options here that we'll get into. Number three, list your bike on every motorcycle recovery website. I'll, I'll put some in the description below here for number three um, and, and see if we get some hits and see if uh, anybody reaches out to you. Number four, share your motorcycle everywhere you can on your social media, Instagram, Facebook, Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> My work? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whatever you need to to get the word out, and that's a big purpose of doing this video right now. You know, get a, get a couple friends together um, and just get the word out on your bike. You never know. Facebook groups are really good about that sometimes. And number five, reflect on the situation. Uh, there are criminals out there, and and this sucks, man. There's some evil people out there. But at least it wasn't your life. Uh, you can save up, get a new bike. Uh, and invest in some high quality theft protection. I'll, I'll put a link below here for uh, a giant Amazon list of motorcycle theft protection and deterrence that you can uh, you can purchase for yourself. There you have it, five things that can help you out after your motorcycle gets stolen, what to do. I wanna remind you, watch this video all the way through. Please let some ads play through. You know, when you're done watching this video, just keep letting it play, it'd be amazing. It directly helps Cowie Flow, because it's just gonna support him and get a new bike. I mean, it's, the, it's free to do. Just. Have, have it set up on a computer somewhere, open it a few times on the tab, however that works, right? Uh, please, it'd help out a lot. Next, we're gonna ask Harry Flo his experience in getting his bike stolen, and I hope it helps you guys as viewers. And to be semi-educational as well. Yeah, exactly. All right, man. Well, anyway, what happened? All right, so, started that morning, it was, um, it was actually the very last day of January. Um, I was getting my bike prepped. I just bought a brand new RSC uh, Performance One Finger Clutch from the Six Shop, one of my favorite stores that I like to buy part, motorcycle parts for. Um, and I just got done. I was I set it all up. I rode it around a little bit, bit popped a couple, you know, nooners, test, testing her out a little bit. Um, and then the next day, I was like, okay, well, I'm I'm gonna ride it to work tomorrow because. It was still, you know, end of January in California. It was still a little chilly, not too bad. It was decent, yeah. Um, so I set it in my apartment complex. We have a, a designated spots for our parking. Well, the motorcycles all park up front, which is right next to the wall. So I put my bar bike next to the wall, right by a big post, and I locked up the steering. Uh, I locked up the steering, but I unfortunately unlike normal days I did not put my chain I have a I had a 54 2 sprocket and on the sprocket were these like little holes that I would put the chain through the tire through that hole on the sprocket and lock it up so there's no way that wheel was gonna be moving yeah. like you would have to like drug it just to even get anywhere but that day I ended up not doing it and I told myself okay like I'm gonna ride the bike tomorrow and to, to go to work and I work uh, typically between 4 to 4.30 in the morning. Uh, that morning I woke up, I was feeling a little bit tired, more tired than normal, mm -hmm. uh, and it was quite chilly, and I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna go ahead and not do that. Also, to, to let you know as well, I did, however, have my cover over my motorcycle, mm -hmm. which there has supposedly been a statistic saying yeah. that most of the time when you have a cover of your bike, even though it's not just you know to protect it from rain and stuff, it is semi of a, uh, deter. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I had that on and then I had the steering locks and then I went to work and again I left about four o'clock in the morning um, which the bike was still there because I always like to double check and I parked right next to it and I left 
and um, my roommate at the time was leaving work right around 5 50 6 o'clock in the morning said that it was there uh, i get home right around one o'clock in the afternoon and i pull up and i'm like looking for my bike and i don't see it and then i see the my cover just on the ground and i like literally it yeah, off the pit of, it. the pit of my stomach just sunk oh. sunk man and I was like, no way. Uh, I mean, it's such a crappy thing. I, I spent so much money on money on that bike. I've worked through it. I've been through two engines on that bike to make yeah. sure to keep it running. Um, and then, yeah, so I panicked. Uh, I did, however, look, I did, however, before doing anything, I walked around my entire apartment complex. Mm -hmm. Maybe there was like some teenage punk kids or something yeah. or anything. Pushing around. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I, area. I looked through that entire apartment complex, couldn't find anything. Um, and then that's when I called the police, which actually, unfortunately, because it's not a uh, immediate need of, of an assistance, yep. you will be on the phone for a little while. I sat on the phone for approximately close to 35, 40 minutes, oh, just God. trying to put that in. Just fuming. Exactly, yeah, yeah oh, just man. full of anger. And I called the police, they showed up, and luckily, which is also another big important thing to do, especially if you're someone like me who likes to change a lot of the stock items on the bike, is anytime you have something new on it, you know, hey, also take a picture of it. Yeah. Post it on your Instagram. You know, it's not only just, or, or yeah, whatever right. social media use, but. It's exhaust and it's like the parts, the handlebars, yeah. Parts, yeah. And it's not only just like, hey, you know, like I'm, just, I'm stoked that my bike looks like this, but it also helps when the cops are like, hey, what does your bike look like? And you have all these photos of it. Yeah. Obviously, I'm not, you know, running around showing all the videos. <laughs> uh, um, I did, however, have photos of the bike, and, and me and uh, Goober actually did go to a parking lot to practice some like little power wheelies and some clutch up wheelies and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so I did have a pretty recent photo of that with my windshield cut. Mm -hmm. Yeah, put that right here. Yeah, <laughs> and then uh, and yep. then um, yeah, and then after that, I called my insurance company. Uh, so the problem with my insurance company that had later on figured out was I always get liability for my bikes, especially when they're paid off and they're usually stunt bikes. So like they're gonna get beat up and dropped or whatever. Um, but with I have Geico. With Geico, you can ask for liability, but you can still add on a comprehensive uh, theft protection. Yeah. Which, you know, apart from them as well as me, it was a little bit of my fault for not paying attention to make sure I have it. But when I set up my insurance with that bike when I first bought it, I did ask them for yeah. theft protection. And because obviously, you know, insurance companies nowadays, they just want to make sure they don't have to pay whatever as yeah. best they can. They, I asked them to go through the phone logs to make sure to, to show them that I did ask for it. And they were like, it's been too long. And so I basically got screwed out of all that money that insurance would have helped me with yeah. as well. You pay for insurance, you're like, okay, cool. Give me the full coverage, give me the theft protection. Awesome, I'm good, right? Yeah, I've got the phone already 40 minutes. Cool, awesome, bye, you don't think of it again, you know? And then uh, it's not so you like look back in your account or you until it's already too late. So I have a final question for you, Adam. What exactly happened when the police showed up? So basically, after the gentleman showed up, he just asked me, where was I parked? About what time was everything missing? Um, which the specific time I wasn't entirely too sure of because I just gave him a time of when my cousin last said he saw it. So basically, once the uh, police officer showed up, um, he kind of just asked me like, about what time do you think everything happened? And my, I gave him the time from when my roommate last said he saw it to when I got home, which eventually later on, I ended up calling back to give him a more narrow time because my neighbor actually called and informed me that when she got home from work, my bike was no longer there and it was 11 o'clock in the morning. So after that, he asked me like where it was. And another reason too, how he knew like how exactly they stole it was where the bike was parked, there was a couple pieces of metal on the floor. Now these pieces of metal are actually probably something important to kind of like learn about just in case. And what it is, is it's kind of like a little screw and it looks almost like um, a, a little uh, half moon shaped mm -hmm. circle of like metal 
and that's basically your steering lock and what a lot of these thieves will do is they'll just go to the left side of your bike where your clutch is and kick the crap out of your left bar handle and when they do that in turn that ends up breaking the steering lock yep. and then again if you will have nothing else on your bike except for that they just pop it in neutral or hold the clutch and roll it away mm -hmm. so how exactly it was gone i don't know anyway so we found the metal shaving so obviously we knew kind of how they did it uh, i sent showed them pictures and basically said, well, all right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and make a police report. And then eventually what happens with that, that case number that he gave me is that case gets filed to a um, uh, detective. Mm -hmm. And then after that, the detective is basically the person who does all of the rest. Mm -hmm. So it's a waiting game at this point, right? Basically, yeah. And one of my good buddies from back in the Midwest where I used to live, um, his motorcycle got stolen as well. Yeah. He had a, uh, I think it's the, it was the one, yeah, yeah, I think so, yeah, oh, yeah, three nine, yeah. yeah exactly, mm -hmm. yeah, that little one cylinder, <laughs> that little one cylinder KTM bike, um, one in all of Missouri, or yeah, something. exactly, <laughs> his, his bike, and again, like what you were saying, he does, he doesn't live close to yeah. TJ, mm -hmm. but, um, his motorcycle got stolen, and he didn't get inform informed about it until probably like a month, month and a half later, so it's definitely been a little over a month for me now, um, you know, high mm -hmm. hopes, but, just trying to yeah. save up some money and, and hopefully be getting uh, another bike here soon because mm -hmm. I'm not going to stop riding. Man. That's right. Exactly. You know, I love it too much. Exactly. Very good. Very good. Well, let's end it there. And uh, as some closing words here for all of you that made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for supporting us. I really appreciate it. It's literally going to, every every cent is going to go towards um, Kaiflo getting another bike. So okay. thank you for your contribution. Um, and if you feel so inclined to donate more, the Go Squad me is again in the description. All right, we'll do the remember guys. Yeah. You can say like remember ride safe, yeah. like ride safe, whatever. And I'll say you know wheelie higher, and they'll yeah. say when you're a trickle, have a yodel and pickle. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, all right, let's do it. Okay. Three, two, one. So goobers continue to ride safe and wheelie higher, baby. And when you're in a trickle, play a yodel and pickle. Ha <laughs> ha